Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana uh, with an exciting project for you today. It's very beginner friendly. Um, it's a great spring look. Um, before we talk about this dress, I just want to remind you uh, to please follow us on our social media, on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. There's lots of other great content I hope you're going to follow. We wanted to do a dress. Um, Dresses are so big right now. I keep watching all of these series like Bridgerton where everyone's wearing long gowns. Um, I loved watching The Queen's Gambit that has um, the character wearing a lot of really fun dresses with a 60s vibe. So I feel like this swing dress that we've done has that 60s vibe, a really fresh, colorful print. I can just picture this actually a little bit more modernized with some chunky boots. Um, maybe you want to wear it with a short short. Maybe you just want to wear it with a slip under. Um, if you're worried about wearing kind of a lightweight sheer-ish fabric, um, you could just double the whole dress so it's kind of self-lined, um, so it's not so sheer. Anyway, um, we will talk about the fabric later on. This is part of a whole little group of beautiful digital print cottons that we have in our online store. Um, oh, the other great thing about this video, I almost forgot to say, is we don't need a pattern. We've created a pattern from an existing garment. So if you have an existing garment at home that has a neckline that you like, that has kind of an armholes that you like, um, you can copy that pattern. Just maybe make it longer if you're just taking a top and making it into a dress. We'll talk about how to lengthen that as well. So I think that's all I have to say. Um, we're gonna move on to talk about the materials that you need for this project. Before we get started on any cutting and sewing, I just wanna go over um, the materials that we need and I'm gonna remind you to please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay, let's talk about what we need. So for today's project, um, We've actually taken this uh, top that we actually got at a thrift store. It's the perfect little top. It's very, very, very simple. There's no darts, um, no special design lines. It's just the, um, you know, the nice round neckline, sleeveless, um, and kind of a nice A shape. So we've created a pattern. Um, I'm not going to really go over a lot of the pattern making. Um, but it, maybe you want to make a simple dress with a pattern you already have. A lot of the steps, obviously, that we're going through um, will show you how to, um, you know, a lot of the steps needed to do a simple dress like this. So I've created my pattern front and back. Now let's talk about the materials. Um, of course, the main thing we're looking at today is this beautiful 100% cotton um, digital lin uh, cotton print. Um, it's a cotton lawn, so it's nice and light and crisp for um, spring summer. Um, if you like this print in particular, it's available in our online store. The item is 23474. Um, it's part of a collection of a bunch of other <laughs> beautiful digital lawn prints, all with this nice fresh white background. This is really sweet with the heart motif. Um, some really, really fun things here, nice and colorful probably gonna show it to you upside down <laughs> anyway this if you can see is actually rainbows unicorns and hearts um, stars all of our favorites um, and this one here is a really sweet um, novelty print it's all these kind of fashionista girls really sweet and fun um, these are great for like adults great for kids um, obviously very good for a simple dress, but also could be a really fun swingy skirt um, to wear with maybe a tank top in the summer. Um, anyway, maybe even a shirtwaist dress. Lots and lots of um, great projects that you can do with these fabrics. Um, moving on to the materials that we need. When I made my pattern, I actually used um, a product. It's kind of like a pattern cloth. Uh, it's called True Grid, and again, if you're looking for that in our online store, it's item 17097. We're going to put this information on the screen, hopefully, for you to see more easily. Um, of course, I need a lot of other sewing supplies. I'm going to need some fabric scissors to cut out my fabric. I've got pins. I'm going to pin my pattern pieces. Um, obviously, my sewing machine with coordinating thread. Um, we're doing this as a non-serger project. Um, so you don't need a serger, just your straight stitch on your sewing machine and of course an operating ironing board and iron. 
So I think we're ready to move on to actually cut out our fabric, so let's do that now. So I have both pattern pieces pinned to my fabric now. Um, I have quite a bit left over and that's great because I'm actually going to be using some of the leftover fabric to create bias to finish the neckline and the armhole, so that's great. Um, a little bit of a tip about um, cutting fabric. Um, now please keep in mind that I'm left-handed, so I'm going to be cutting kind of in a counterclockwise motion around the pieces. If you're lefty, please do that. If you're right-handed, it's better to have your work um, to your right and be cutting in a clockwise motion. Uh, hope you'll give that a try and see if you understand <laughs> why I'm recommending that. Um, it definitely makes it easier to have your kind of work away from you as you're cutting. So I'm just gonna start cutting, as I mentioned. I kind of should mention, I'm just noticing on my pattern, um, for the side seams and for the center back seam, I've used a 5 8 inch seam allowance, which is very common with commercial patterns. Um, I've only added a quarter inch seam allowance at the neckline and the armholes because we're gonna be finishing those edges with a single fold bias tape, and all we need for that is a quarter inch. So that's maybe something good to know if you're making your own pattern, you're gonna be doing the same method as me. So I've put my front and back pieces aside. Uh, right now, like I said, because I have a little bit extra fabric, I'm going to make my own bias tape for the neckline and the armholes. Um, we have other videos that show how to do some really fun methods on folding bias tape yourself, including um, a really fun method at your ironing board with a pin. Um, we also have some like bias folders, so we're going to include that link um, to, the, to that video. Um, it's actually a fabric weaving video, um, but for this method, um, I'm going to show you quickly um, to cut some bias strips. Um, for this, I am actually going to be using um, a ruler, a rotary cutter, and the self-healing mat. Um, if you don't have these items, all you could just use is the ruler, um, and then you can use some chalk or a fabric marker and your scissors to create um, the bias strips yourself with scissors, but I have these tools so I'm going to use them. They're going to be way faster. So I'm cutting on a 45 degree angle, a nice straight line, as long as I can. The longer the strips you can make, uh, the less joining that you're going to have to do later. So make some nice long strips. So now I have this nice straight line on a 45 degree angle. To save myself a bit of time, I'm gonna fold that in half, lining up that line. For this method of bias that we're gonna be using for this project specifically, we need one and a quarter inch wide um, strips. I'm pretty sure that I'll get away with just three strips but I'm gonna cut an extra one just in case I have to do any joining. It's easier to do it now than to try and go back and do it later. If you've never used a rotor cutter before, I recommend that you probably take a class or watch a lot of videos. Um, they're extremely dangerous. It's basically like a razor blade on a wheel. So definitely keep it out of reach of your children and be very, very careful yourself. It's so easy to maybe nick your finger. So again, safety first. So I'm gonna put my little strips aside and we're actually gonna start sewing now. So our sewing starts with the back of the dress because we need, to, um, we have a center back seam, so we're gonna sew that first. Um, I just wanna mention um, from the top that we were copying our pattern from, there was actually no seam down the back. So we needed to add the seam allowance. Um, so your pattern piece will look maybe bigger than your top, but just know that that's gonna be eaten up by your seam. So it's not gonna be quite so big. Um, I'm just gonna remove some of the pins. Um, I also want um, for our dress 
to have a little bit of an opening from the top of the neck down just to make it easier to pull over your head and then we'll just have a little hook at the top to like secure the neck. So I'm going to quickly measure down from the top neck. Um, I'm going to go seven inches. I think that's kind of a nice um, opening. Uh, make it very easy to pull over your head. If you have, um, you're using a pattern that's easily pull, to pull over your head, um, or you've copied a top that was really easy to pull over your head, you don't need to do this. It's just kind of a, an optional little bonus thing that we're doing. So I've measured down to seven inches and I'm just putting the tiniest nick into both layers in the seam allowance, maybe a nick of about an eighth of an inch, um, to indicate where that opening goes to. So now that I've done that, I can remove the rest of the pins. Um, and I just wanna mention, it's a great time to say, um, if you're making a pattern and you're using pattern cloth, it's gonna be much more durable than pattern tissue um, that you get in commercial patterns. So if you're planning on using this um, pattern again, maybe it'll become a beloved simple project, um, it's a good idea to use the um, pattern fabric um, to last longer. Now, because we are doing French seams, uh, we need to put our fabric wrong sides together. So this fabric is really easy to tell the right and the wrong side. The right side, the print is much more vibrant. We can see the print more clearly. So again, we're putting the wrong sides uh, where the print is a little bit more obscured. We're putting those together. They really need to be lined up on the center back seam. Like I said, there's no surgery required for this pattern, uh, this project, so what we need to do is finish our seams in a different way, and the method that we're gonna show is French seams. So I've got my um, center back lined up. I'm gonna place some pins in. We wanna keep this project very beginner friendly, so we're always gonna be pinning our pieces together before we sew. That'll make sure that nothing slides around or bunches or gapes. Um, I don't need to pin right at the top because we're gonna be leaving that open for the opening at the top. If you are not doing that opening, please pin right to the top because you'll be um, completely sewing that seam. So then I've got that pinned, we can bring it to the sewing machine. So I always recommend starting to sew something from the hem up. That'll make sure your hems always hang straight. Now, for anyone who's never sewn a French seam before, it's a two-step process. And the first step is that we need to sew a quarter inch um, along that seam. I'm gonna backstitch. And it's all pinned in place, so I'm just gonna hold it steady. So as I mentioned before, because we're leaving the little opening for at the top of the uh, center back to pull it over your head, we have a little nick in the fabric that indicates where we want to stop sewing. Now with the French seam, um, we want to actually kind of stitch right kind of off the edge of the fabric so that we'll be able to press that seam allowance open later. So as I approach that little nick, I'm going to start to decrease my seam allowance here. So right off the edge of my fabric towards the nick. So I've removed the pins. Um, as I said, we've at this point we've um, stitched a quarter inch seam allowance down our center back. The stitching has kind of gone off the edge at the notch. So the easiest way to be able to uh, get prepared for step two of our French seam is to press this seam allowance open. Be very careful not to get your fingertips in the way. We don't need any singed fingers. So once we've got that pressed flat, now we're gonna bring the right sides together. And that's what we normally do with sewing, is the right sides are generally sewn facing each other. And then because we've pressed that flat, when we um, go to stitch this second seam, which is part two, 
it'll be much easier. I'm actually even gonna pre-press it to make it even easier. Roll out that seam towards that little clip that we did earlier. So at this point, um, I'm gonna apply a few pins, again, just to kind of keep this laying really flat while we're sewing, and then I will meet you at the sewing machine. So as I mentioned before, I'll prefer starting to sew from the hem up to the neckline. And part two of a French seam um, means that we're sewing 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance, uh, which is about a centimeter if you're working in metric. Um, so what happens when we sew that, just do a bit of backstitch at the beginning, is all of those raw edges of the fabric are being enclosed in this little casing. So when we press this open, it's going to be such a beautiful clean finish. And as we approach that little um, clip in our fabric, I don't actually want to stitch all the way to that clip. I'm going to stop my sewing a little bit below that because we're going to basically be pressing this seam open. If we stitch too close to that, we won't be able to actually do that. So um, we're just going to sew to what an inch below that. So I've pressed our back seam to one side, uh, that French seam, we just kind of press that to one side, make sure it's nice and open and flat on the other side. Then I've taken our front, I've removed the pattern tissue, taken the pins out, and again I've put these two pieces wrong sides together. Um, the piece underneath is the back, this is the front sitting on top, they're sitting with the wrong sides facing. So the right sides are facing out. I'm gonna sew a French seam for the shoulder seam as well. So I've pinned at the shoulder. We're gonna do the same process, stitching a quarter inch. We'll do both shoulders here. Notice I didn't even break the threads. I'll just trim that away later. So I'm going to follow exactly the same process that I did for the center back seam. I'm going to press these quarter inch seam allowances open. I'm going to put the um, front and back facing each other. And then I'm going to stitch 3 eighths of an inch about a centimeter across um, the shoulder and then I'm actually going to press those seam allowances toward the front. That'll look much nicer um, on the outside of the dress if we press our seam allowances toward the front of the dress. So after that I'll be able to show you how to start the binding for the neck and the armholes. Okay, so I've taken, remember those one and a quarter inch strips of bias that we cut earlier, um, I've taken those strips and I've ironed them um, I've pressed them wrong sides together so the right side, the nice bright colorful print, is still showing. So now it's folded in half, it's about 5 eighths of an inch. Um, now I'm going to be applying this, we're going to start with the armhole. So I'm going to take the cut edge of my bias, I'm going to line it up with the cut edge of my armhole, and I'm going to pin it in place. Uh, the bias tape can go a little bit beyond the side seam, that's going to be trimmed away later. We just want to make sure that those uh, cut edges are lined up perfectly. Now I'd love to be able to pin the whole bias along the armhole before we start, um, but we're working with curves. Um, I'm also going to be, be pulling on the bias tape a little bit to help the garment hug to the body. Um, that's one of the actual main benefits of bias tape is that it kind of um, stretches and kind of goes around curves and also helps bring uh, garments uh, into the body. So we're just going to put that one pin in and then we're going to stitch very slowly at the sewing machine. 
Um, I hope you're going to do nice slow stitching as well so we're nice and accurate. Um, so now that we have our pin in place, we can go to the sewing machine. So we have our bias um, attached to the armhole. The raw edges are all lined up. I'm going to be sewing a quarter inch seam allowance again. Again, I'm just going to oops, do a little back stitch there. I'm going to remove the pin. Now the really important thing here is to take your time um, and then just always make sure that that raw edge is lined up with the raw edge, the armhole and the bias tape and to make sure you're keeping a consistent quarter inch seam allowance as you go. We're also going to be pulling slightly on the bias tape to help it kind of go around the curves and help the armhole hug into the body once the garment is finished. So maybe just do a few stitches at a time. Really take your time. And it really is just the slightest amount of pull that I'm putting on here. And I'm just getting to the last edge, the side seam. I'm going to do a back stitch. Stitch right off the edge of that bias. So then I'm going to show you how to press it and do step two of the um, bias application. So we have our bias stitched to our beautiful armhole. So what we want to do now is press the bias toward the armhole and we want to make sure that the folded edge of our bias is actually kind of um, going toward all the seam allowance. So everything's being um, pressed toward the armhole. We're probably going to have to do this in two little steps. I'm going to have to move my work a little bit. Let's see how, because it's the bias, it's going to really mold to the curves of the armhole. That wouldn't happen if we were just doing um, a piece of, a strip of fabric that was cut on the straight grain. Again, all of the seams and the bias are going toward the armhole. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat, it just have to be a nice crisp press. So we're going to head back to the sewing machine for the next step in the armhole and I'll meet you there. So now we're going to stitch <coughs> the seam allowances in place. So as you can see from the underside, the, all of the seam allowances and the folded edge of the bias are to the right. I'm going to line up a mark on my presser foot. There's like a little red mark just to the left of the needle. I'm going to line that up with the seam so that we're stitching about an eighth of an inch to the right of that seam. And again, you can take this nice and slow. We want to be really accurate. And I want you to be especially slow as you stitch over the shoulder seam because it's a little bit bulkier. Make sure your seam allowances are going to the front of the garment. I'm just going to continue stitching right off the edge of the bias. And then I'm going to go to the ironing board. We're going to press this all to the inside of our dress. And we're going to press it in place and then we're going to stitch it in place. So I've pressed the bias to the inside of the dress um, in the, at the armhole. Now we want to stitch um, close to the folded edge of our bias and we're going to tack that to our garment. So again, I'm lining up that folded edge of our bias to that same mark to the left of my needle. And I'm going, we're stitching from the inside of the garment so that we can be really accurate getting close to that folded edge. You can go nice and slow because we're going around curves and you want to keep it nice and flat. Again, we want to take our time as we go over the shoulder seam because it's a bit of a lump. Going to stitch right off the end of the bias tape. 
I'm going to bring this back to the ironing board just to touch up, get it nice and flat, and then we can move on to binding the neck edge. So before we get uh, started applying the bias to the neck edge, there's a little bit of prep we need to do. I want to mark the seam allowance of that center back seam. So I'm just going to line up the two um, back neck edges. I'm going to use my handy mat here and I'm going to take my scissors and I know that my seam allowance on the back was 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to clip into my neck edge again just the tiniest little bit at the top of the neck edge so that's the length of my seam allowance. So that's going to let me know um, where I want to press the seam allowance back for the center back. So then I'm going to take another, actually let me just turn this right side out. <clears throat> I'm going to take another piece of bias. Now make sure that you have cut a straight edge across the end of your bias. So again we have a folded edge and a cut edge. So the cut edge is going to be lined up with the neck edge. But basically, I'm just going to pin uh, my bias. The end of it is lining up with the center back seam. The cut edge is lined up with the back neck edge. And I'm going to put a pin in it. And then there's the tiniest little bit of sewing that I'm going to do. And I don't think we really need to show it, but I'm going to stitch across um, half the width of the seam allowance. If my seam allowance is 5 eighths, it's going to be about 5 sixteenths, <laughs> just over a quarter inch. Anyway, I'm just going to do that quickly and then we can kind of look at the next step. So I've just quickly done that little bit of stitching across the end of the, um, of the bias. So what we need to do now is that little mark that we made in our seam allowance at the top neck comes into play. So we're going to kind of finger press that bias um, away from the center back and then we're going to fold the fabric back at that notch. So we want to make sure that the bias is totally going towards the neck edge now once we folded it back and then we're going to pin that in place so that the seam allowance is folded back perfectly along that notch. And again, we're going to take a close up of that. So now we just like we did with our other binding, we're going to be stitching with a quarter inch along the kind of from the cut edge. I'm going to have to remove the pin, but just make sure that you kind of keep that um, crease at the little cut, the nicked edge there. I'm just going to start sewing right from that folded edge of the center back seam. Do a bit of a back stitch. I know this may seem a little finicky, but it is going to give it a really beautiful professional look when we're finished. Now don't forget, just like we did the binding of the armhole, we want to be giving a little bit of pressure pulling on the bias tape, making sure that we keep those raw edges even and keeping that seam allowance really uh, nice at a perfect quarter inch. You can go as slow as you need to. So as we get closer to the end of our bias, um, we want to end up doing the same thing that we did where we started, but of course we haven't stitched that little um, piece yet. Um, so we're actually going to stop sewing. We're going to back stitch just a couple of stitches, to secure our work. And then we need to use the little mark that we have for our seam allowance and that actually indicates the length of the bias that we need. So again, kind of giving a little bit of tension on our bias. We know we need to cut it to the length of 
um, one seam allowance back from the center neck, center back edge. And we're just gonna trim that. So then I'm gonna do the same process. This time you're gonna see it where I'm going to bring the end of the bias over to the center back seam. We're going to stitch that kind of just over a quarter inch um, across the end. I know this is a bit complicated. In a back stitch at the top and bottom of this seam. Let's get the thread snips. So now what we need to do, just like we did where we started, we fold back the seam allowance at the center back towards, um, actually towards our sh shoulder seam. And we kind of get that all laying flat with the seam allowances um, going toward us. And we're gonna continue sewing our beautiful quarter inch where we stopped sewing before. Gonna continue sewing, sewing right to that folded edge, and back stitch. There we go. Gonna trim my threads. I'm gonna meet you at the sewing at the ironing board to show the next step. So I've just caught myself in a little bit of an error. I realized um, when I started sewing my bias to the neck edge that I should have had the seam allowances going toward the center back. So I'm just going to unpick a couple of stitches. Um, hopefully you'll be catching that before you actually do it. You're watching the video first. But basically what should happen when you start sewing your bias to your neck edge is your seam allowances are actually getting pressed toward the center back. So I've taken out a couple of stitches. I'm just going to stitch it correctly so all the seam allowances are going the right way. And now we can move on to the next step. Sorry about that. Nobody is fallible, especially me. Um, but hopefully nobody's got caught in the same mistake and we'll be all happy later. All right, so we're back at the ironing board. Um, this is one corner of that neck edge. Um, like we did before with our um, armhole binding, we need to press the binding toward that edge, but it, because uh, we're at the center back, we also need to kind of turn it inside out. And the reason why we wanted to do that little thing where we fold the seam allowances toward the center is that's gonna give us a beautiful kind of little double folded little edge that will be the opening um, for the back neck. So we, that's kind of already established. So we're gonna turn that one inside out at the other end as well. And then just like we did with the armhole, we're going to press our binding toward the raw edges, toward the neck opening. Now we can't really do that right at the corners, but we can get most of the neck edge pressed that way. Just be careful going around the curves. Again, this is why bias is our friend because it actually will press flat going around curves. What we can actually do at the corners already is we can press in towards the neck edge and just create that nice beautiful square corner. We can do that on both ends of the back neck. So we're going to do like we did before. We're going to um, under stitch very close to that seam so that everything will wrap into the inside of the garment really nicely. And then we're going to top stitch it. I'm going to show those steps now. So just like we did with our armholes, we want to stitch all of our seam allowances um, to the right 
Um, we can't really get right in uh, where we started the binding, but we're just going to kind of start at a spot um, that we can actually access with the sewing machine. Again, uh, as you recall from the armhole, I've got the seam uh, lined up with a mark on my sewing machine so that the needle is falling just to the right of that mark. We're going to stitch nice and slow to be accurate and go around these curves. Again, we can't stitch right to the end of the bias, so we just kind of go as far as the machine will let us. And do a little back stitch. Turn that. We're going to press the binding to the inside of the garment, and while we're doing that, we're going to press the opening of the neck edge and then we'll be able to top stitch that all in place. So we've brought our neck edge to the ironing board. We're going to be pressing the bias to the inside of the garment. Now while we're here at the iron, I actually want to continue pressing that little opening that we have I've decided um, that little bit of sewing that we did, remember we um, didn't quite sew right up to um, where we had clipped. Um, I'm not really happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at where I stopped sewing, the second seam um, right here. Probably take a look at that in close up. I'm going to go about a centimeter below that and I'm gonna clip through all layers of my seam allowance um, I don't want to clip into my stitching. I want to be very, very careful not to stitch and uh, clip into my stitching, um, but I'm going to uh, clip toward it. And that'll just free up more of the seam allowance that we can use to create the little um, double folded opening uh, for the neck edge. So once we've made that little clip, it actually frees up our seam allowance in order to be able to do that little double turn like we have at the top all the way down and it'll be a beautiful clean finish without having to um, use a serger or do any seam finishes. So just um, above that clip that we made, I'm just basically taking the seam allowance and I'm folding it back and kind of doubling it under and then I'm going to press it. Now I hope you're working with a nice cotton or a rayon like I am. <laughs> It'll hold the press really nicely. Um, if you're working with a less cooperative fabric, maybe you're working with polyester, um, maybe put some pins in place to hold this before you have a chance to stitch it down. You may still even want to use pins uh, if you are using a more cooperative fabric just to know that everything's staying in place. So just like we did with the armholes, now we want to stitch that folded edge of our bias to the inside of the garment. I'm actually going to start sewing near the shoulder seam. I don't know if you can see this, but this is um, one of the shoulder seams. Uh, just because it's kind of a, a hidden spot later, you won't notice where this sewing stops and starts. We're just going to hold it nice and flat, stitch nice and slow. We're going around curves. Now because of the shoulder that I started at, we're coming to that center back uh, seam really quickly. So as we approach that, we're just keeping everything nice and flat and square. I'm gonna do the last couple of stitches really slowly. I'm gonna leave my needle in my work, lift the presser foot, pivot my work, and then I'm gonna continue still sewing close to that folded edge now, down the center back little opening there. If you've put pins in place, make sure you're removing them as you go. 
So we're going to stitch a couple of stitches past um, that little uh, corner there. Two. We're going to leave our needle in our work, raise our presser foot, turn our work 90 degrees, keep it nice and flat, put our presser foot back down, stitch across the center back seam, stitching towards that folded edge again, leaving the needle in the work, raising the presser foot, and continuing to stitch now back towards the neck edge along the center front. It really is so ideal that we've pressed this all in place before we sew, it just makes it so much easier. So when we get there, we're gonna overlap the stitching slightly and do a back stitch to secure all of that. Once we've trimmed those threads, we are gonna have such a pretty little back opening here. It's gonna very professional looking. We're going to stitch, uh, stitch a hook and eye there to keep it closed and that will almost be invisible with just that little bit of a peekaboo there. So now that we have the beautiful neck edge done, the last couple of things we need to do are obviously the side seams and the hem. So the side seams, we're going to do a French seam just like we did down the center back. So again, we need to have our right sides facing out wrong sides facing in. Like always, we're going to start sewing at the hem. Now, please, if you're a beginner, place pins along your side seam to make it sure it all stays um, in line. Uh, I am not gonna do that, sorry. Um, we just have the camera set up at the sewing machine, so I just wanna keep sewing. So I'm lining up the hem edge the cut edge of the side seam. We're sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance, so we just want to make sure that those raw edges are staying even. So as we approach the armhole, we want to make sure that the ends are matching. I'm actually going to trim off that little bit of excess binding that we had on our armhole, because we don't need that anymore. I'm not going to show you step two of the French seam. I think we get the point. Uh, we're going to press that seam open. Then we're going to fold our dress right sides together. We're going to do a second row of stitching. I'm going to show you what that looks like when it's finished though, because it does kind of give a nice finish to the armhole. And then we're going to actually tack the seam allowance over so you don't have to worry about the seam allowance hanging free but I'll show you that when we get to that step. So I finished my side seam. Um, as you can see where the, um, at the armhole, um, we kind of like bound the edge and then sewed the side seam. And that's really worked out fine because all of those raw edges um, of the binding and everything are been, have been encased inside our French seam. So it's actually a really pretty finish. Uh, we've pressed the seam allowances towards the front of the garment, but we want to make sure that this doesn't kind of wobble around because that might be a little bit uncomfortable in your underarm. So we're going to stitch that down just to keep it nice and flat in the garment and less um, irritating. I'm going to stitch that from the outside. I'm just going to stitch through all the layers. Again, right now the seam allowances are all going to the left of the seam. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, the other armhole thread and that'll just keep everything nice and flat against the body. So I'm ready to hem now. This is one of the last steps before we sew the hook on at the neck edge. Um, so I've allowed uh, a 5 8 of an inch hem allowance. So what I'm going to do is actually a running stitch. And what a running stitch is means I'm just going to be stitching through one layer of fabric. I'm going to increase my stitch length. I've been doing all of this sewing at a length of 2.5. Um, usually when you're sewing, it's either kind of 2.5 to 3. I'm going to go all the way up to uh, 4 because um, this stitching is going to come out later and the larger the stitch length, <laughs> the easier it'll come out. Anyway, like I said, I'm stitching 5 eighths of an inch from the raw edge at the hem. 
Um, and what happens uh, is this stitch is going to be like a really um, a good way of marking the hem. Um, it'll come out later, but it's going to be a guide for us pressing up the hem. So this is probably the most boring part of the video, so we're just going to race through it, and then I will meet you at the sewing, at the ironing board. So we've got our running stitch in place, um, and then, like I said, that's going to be our guide for pressing. So I'm just going to press the hem to the inside of the garment using my stitching as a guide. And I'm not going to show the whole process, but basically I'm going to press it up that 5 eighths of an inch around the whole hem. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring the raw edge of the hem towards the fold. And I'm going to press it again. Now if you'd like, um, please put pins in place to hold the hem in place. Um, it's a lot of hemming. So uh, you may want to pin it as you go so it doesn't come apart. But basically that's um, the process that I'm following right now. Press once on the stitching and then fold the raw edge to the inside. That'll give you this beautiful uh, just over a quarter inch hem. It'll hang nicely. It'll look really professional. And then we're going to be stitching the hem down. I'll meet you at the sewing machine to do that. So I've done all my pressing. I just want to kind of note that at the um, at the seams, because we've done French seams, they're a little bit bulky. So I've actually trimmed uh, the corners when I've pressed them. So it's a little bit less bulky. Uh, don't have to stitch through quite so many layers. So again, um, if you're a beginner, you've put pins in. I have not. Um, I'm just going to be a wild man here. <laughs> so just like we did when we um, stitched our binding down to the inside of the garment, we're going to do exactly the same thing with our hem. That folded edge of our hem um, on the left is going to line up uh, with the marking on our presser foot and the needle is going to be um, just to the right of that little fold. Um, again, take your time. I need to set my machine back to a shorter stitch length of 2.5. I don't want to use my running stitch anymore. Um, and I'm just going to sew the hem and then we can stitch the hook and eye on and our dress will be done. You are sewing with a drapey fabric like a rayon or a uh, polyester. I would caution you against kind of trying to pull your hem flat because that will stretch your hem out and it's going to become kind of a wavy um, mess. <laughs> so if you want your hem to hang nice and straight, um, just let the machine kind of feed your work through. I've just stitched over the last couple of stitches where we started. I'm going to remove, remove the work from the sewing machine, trim my threads. We still have to remove that running stitch that we did. Um, or you can leave it in. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> but maybe before you do your final press, you want to remove that um, stitch so that it doesn't leave any marks uh, from the pressing. Here we have our finished dress. I'm so happy with it. Um, I hope you really enjoyed learning the techniques that we used about using the bias tape. I think it creates a really professional look. Um, I think this uh, dress is ready for some spring wearing. Um, before we go, I just want to remind you again to follow us on our socials um, on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. There's lots of great content for fashion, for quilt, for home decor, lots of fun stuff. Um, if you have a project, maybe you're going to try out this dress, please be sure to hashtag your project uh, with Create with Fabricana, um, and that will get your project featured on our Instagram. And don't forget, um, this project and other projects are a great way to express yourself. So, so true and be you.